welcome to your monthly update from the Covidence UK study. My name's Adrian Martineau and I'm the Chief Investigator based at Queen Mary University of London. In today's webinar I want to review the treatment options that are being used by our participants uh, for management of long Covid. So why is this question of interest? Well as I've covered in previous webinars one of the aims of Covidence UK is to identify treatments which people are using within the study that associate either with better outcomes of long COVID or with more rapid recovery from the condition. The first step to achieving this aim is to capture a comprehensive picture of the full range of treatments for long COVID that are being used by Covidence UK participants. Because our questionnaire was designed in March and April of 2020, before long COVID was even a recognised entity, the existing questions within it are not well suited or designed to capture details of treatments which people are using for long COVID. We therefore need to develop some new questions for addition to the monthly questionnaire to capture the treatments that people are using. This is a process which then has to be approved by the Ethics Committee, so we want to make sure that the wording of these questions is fit for purpose and comprehensive in its coverage of the various different treatments people are using. Now, very broadly, when you design a questionnaire, there are a couple of approaches. You can either ask an open ended question, such as what treatments have you used or are you currently using for long COVID? The big advantage of this is that we don't miss anything. But the disadvantage is that it can be very difficult for our statisticians to analyse or encode because we end up with large chunks of text um, which don't really lend themselves to quantitative analysis, for example, saying how common this or that treatment is. The alternative approach is to ask a closed question, for example, which of the following treatments have you used or are you using for long COVID? And this is the approach that we often use in Covidence UK, as you'll be aware. The advantage of this is that it's much easier to analyse, but the disadvantage is that we might miss something. And this brings me to the point of this webinar, which is namely to outline the full extent of treatments which we're aware of and check with you if there are others which you may be using. So the purpose of the webinar is to identify the full, full spectrum of long COVID treatments. And I'm going to list the main groups of therapies that we are aware of. But as I say, if anything here is missing, then please do let us know by emailing Sheena at covidence at qmul.ac.uk and we can then incorporate the treatments which you bring to our attention in the structured questions which we submit to the Ethics Committee for approval in the new year. Before I review the various treatments that we're aware of, I want to make it clear that I'm making no claim that any of the following have efficacy for treatment of long COVID. So the first group of treatments are those which were historically used to treat people who had chronic fatigue syndrome and myalgic encephalomyopathy or ME. And this was really done early in the pandemic when it was thought there was a significant overlap between long COVID and these conditions. In fact, that's turned out not to be the case, but we are aware that some people have been offered both cognitive behavioural therapy and graded exercise therapy, uh, particularly early on in the pandemic. Grade exercise therapy uh, can be very challenging for people with long COVID simply because it uh, may uh, accelerate the amount of exercise that people take too rapidly and actually cause adverse offense effects by making people um, exercise too vigorously at an early stage of the condition. But there are some apps out there. Um, here's one from the University of the West of Scotland, the Pacing Project, where uh, which can be used to for people with long COVID to pace themselves as they very gradually build up their activity. So uh, we'll be asking about whether or not Covidence UK participants are using these activity tracking apps. There are a number of other more general treatments such as mindfulness, meditation, acupuncture and yoga, which I believe some people have found to help with long COVID symptoms while others have not. Another group of tr treatments uh, can be grouped together under the term retraining. Uh, and in particular, one of these is called breathing pattern retraining for people who have um, disordered breathing or feel very breathless in an unusual way after long COVID. Um, 
and then smell training for people who have got long term uh, impairment of their sense of smell. I'm aware that there are many diets which have been proposed as being beneficial in long COVID. A couple of the more prominent are a low histamine diet illustrated here and also the process of uh, intermittent fasting. Uh, a number of micronutrients have been proposed to offer benefits in long COVID and some nutraceuticals as well. There are a wide range of these, but they include uh, various members of the B vitamin family, vitamin D, tolovid, medicinals 9, NAC, that's n acetylcysteine and EGCG. A number of pharmaceuticals have also been proposed to be uh, beneficial in certain subgroups of people with long COVID. Um, an infusion of antibodies to the inflammatory cytokine interleukin-6 is certainly being trialled uh, and medicines including antihistamines, mast cell stabilizers, and in women, uh, hormone replacement therapy and hormonal contraception have all been uh, considered as potential therapeutic options in long COVID. Another option that's being investigated in an, at least one randomised control trial is so-called NVNS, which stands for non-invasive vagal nerve stimulation, in which a small clip is placed on the tragus, which is that part of the ear that you can see there, to provide stimuli to the vagus nerve um, and thereby uh, improve symptoms, particularly of fatigue, uh, as has been hypothesised. Um, Several other people uh, I'm aware of have been using hyperbaric oxygen therapy, again, particularly for central nervous system symptoms and fatigue. And another therapy which is being used by some people within the cohort is help apheresis or heparin induced extracorporeal LDL precipitation. So that's a brief summary of the treatments that we're aware of that people are using to treat COVID-19. But if there's anything there that we've missed, please do let us know by emailing covidence at qmul.ac.uk and we will include them in the structured questionnaires that we develop and send out to you in the new year. So all that remains is for me to thank you and all of the participants who contributed to the webinar today by uh, sharing information about the long COVID treatments that they have tried. I wish you all a good holiday and look forward to seeing you again in the new year. Goodbye.